the Spirit of God is with you and also with you. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell, and my pronouns are he and him, and I serve this congregation as its senior pastor. Thank you for inviting and welcoming us into your various viewing locations for The Alternative, an online gathering to reconnect with God and with one another. You are welcome and wanted here and wherever you may be, just however you are. This gathering is an alternative to the myriad of things that grab our attention and time and an opportunity to reconnect, rejoin, and remember. Together we will sing, hear, pray, share, and commune. Our Director of Worship and the Arts, Evan Collins, will lead us in the hymns, and the lyrics will appear on your screen. We hope you will do whatever helps you create meaning and connect with the divine. May you sense God's presence in new ways, alternative ways, ways that are life-giving, loving, and liberating. We are in the season of Easter, a time for celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our curtains are now white, and though we have been using the artwork behind me since Advent, I can't help but look at it anew this Easter season and see something of resurrection contained therein. The candles are already glowing by God's divine spark, and now... We ring this chime. To clear the air, because our worship of God is about to begin. As we prepare to lift our hearts, will you join me in a query? A query is an ancient practice of asking a question. You can engage this question by yourself, with a viewing partner, in the live chat that's off to the side, or with me on Twitter using our church's handle at W-A-C-C-E-L-Y-R-I-A. The question is this, how do we witness
From the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Listen for the word of God stirring within and beyond these words of Scripture. Jesus said to the two disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you all, because everything must be fulfilled in the teaching of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, written about me. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Then he said to them, So it is written, The Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Now, Look, I am sending you the promise of my Abba. You all stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, Jesus retreated from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were in the temple every day, blessing God. For the promise and covenant of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news, we say together, thanks be to God. In the canon of African-American spirituals is a wondrous indeed rapturous peace that many know as witness. Countless arrangers have scored it for vocal ensembles. Witness is one of the pieces you cannot forget having experienced it. The piece asks the question, who will be a witness for my Lord? And the answer comes, my soul is a witness. For my Lord. However, if you want to make mainline Christians squirm with discomfort, just ask, how do you witness? As people rooted in the mainline tradition, we've surrendered witnessing to the more evangelical denominations. Such traditions go on colonizing soul-winning expeditions, which seem to be more conquering than liberating. 
Still, we have an imperative from Jesus to witness to the very best, most beautiful gospel good news. But how do we do that in ways that don't feel icky and gross? How can we be true to our Christian faith and witness to the love of God that's for the whole wide world without stepping onto Roman roads of salvation and salvation tracks that unfold in the form of a cross? There must be a better way to witness to the future God wants and ultimately will have. As many of you know, people from Washington Avenue Christian Church are going to march on Washington, D.C. on June 18th of this year. Debbie Walker, the Director of Advocacy and Christian Education, announced this event on Palm Sunday and that an anonymous donor wrote a $2,500 check to fund the first 25 riders on the bus from Cleveland to Washington, D.C. Even though I knew Debbie would be making this announcement, her invitation to join the march, it inspired me in new ways. Yesterday, we posted the video of her speaking about the march on our social media accounts, and I shared Debbie's video on my personal Facebook page. Within minutes... I received a comment from my eighth grade science teacher. She wrote, Nathan, I wish I could be there, but I can't. Where can I send a contribution? I replied that I would send her a DM, and she answered again saying, I am proud of the work you and your congregation do. Wow. When, when Debbie and I talked about the March on Washington, we knew that our church's participation would be a new form of witness for our church. What we did not expect, however, was that our witness would inspire someone in Texas to support this congregational effort. This contact from a person not directly connected to Washington Avenue is not the first time something like this has happened. So I'm beginning to get curious and think that there may be a pattern here. Late last year, we made a video promoting Week of Compassion and the organization's response to the tornado that ravaged the state of Kentucky. As a result of that video, we received contributions from people in Ohio and, believe it or not, another former teacher in Texas, all who said, this is an effort we want to support. That storm did not impact us directly, but we knew that our witness could have a direct impact, not only for the Disciples of Christ congregation in Mayfield, Kentucky, but for everyone who suffered loss as a result of that devastating twister. Both the video of Debbie announcing the March on Washington and our response to the storms in Kentucky are very different and Yet, they are forms of our church's witness. There are other examples that come to mind, too, of our church's witness. For example, we have a community garden. That's a witness. We open our space to the community for use. That's a witness. We are a green chalice congregation, which means we prioritize the care of God's exceedingly beautiful creation. That's a witness. But what about who we are? What about our worship? When you called Janet Long in 1985, that was a witness to the whole capital C church. The same thing happened when you called me in 2018. 
This church has made a prophetic witness in terms of whom it has called as pastor. I don't say these things arrogantly, but instead to highlight the ways in which our witness has been transforming beyond the walls of our church. When we went through the global pandemic of COVID-19 and suspended in-person activities for 62 weeks, that was a witness because we showed the world that it was imperative that people age 18 and above had ample opportunity to be vaccinated before we regathered. That was a witness. Even after we regathered, we wore masks. When we thought it was safe to remove them, we did, but then we had to wear them yet again. That was a witness. How we are for our neighbors and protect vulnerable populations. That's a profound witness. Finally, we are a pretty diverse bunch in some ways and in other ways not. But we are a mix of differing thoughts, voting habits, educational pedigree, financial resources, etc. We strive hard to cultivate real relationships with no bullshit, fill in the blank, ever. Sometimes working to foster real relationships is oh so difficult, but the witness we gain is worth it. The world needs all these examples of Christian witness. There are ways in which we receive witness, in which we are witnessed to. And that may sound like a complete reversal of the normal order, but we need to be witnessed to as well. Since the creation of the designated music and online worship account, we have been able to do some really cool things. Our online worship experiences are just one example. Through this online medium, people have witnessed to us. For example, we learned that having lyrics on the screen that are large enough to read and closed captions... They are important. I hate to say this, but closed captions were not on my radar when online worship began. I just did not think about them. YouTube generates them automatically for us, which is awesome. And we've learned from some of our online viewers that the availability of captions is of critical importance. Their witness has expanded my thinking an understanding of accessibility. Their witness is one we must hear and honor. Throughout the Lenten season, and certainly on Easter Sunday, we have hosted some of the finest collegiate musicians from the Baldwin Wallace Conservatory of Music. Their music alone is a witness to their God-given talent and dedication. And wow, what a difference their, pre their presence has made in worship. However, there's another form of witness, too, that matters. We get feedback from them. In fact, one of the guest musicians said recently, I didn't know a church like this existed. And I didn't know a preacher could say things like that from the pulpit. Church, that type of feedback is a witness to us and for us because it tells us how people are creating meaning and deepening their faith. It also says that 
our witness to the justice and joy, peace and shalom of God is different than how they have experienced religion or church in the past. These witnesses to us matter just as our congregational witness does. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells his disciples, so it is written, the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. Those first generation disciples were literally eyewitnesses to the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. Their witness was profound, and it has endured for millennia. We have inherited that witness from the first disciples and are custodians of it, even as we are the recipients of new witnesses. Imagine that, church. We get to participate in a wondrous witness that points to the very best, most beautiful gospel good news of Jesus Christ. The witness in which we share is not manipulative in any way. It is not colonizing or conquering. Instead, this witness is life-giving, loving, and liberating. It is true and beautiful in ways we cannot fully comprehend. So, who will be a witness for the Holy One? Let us rise and say that we, the people of Washington Avenue Christian Church, will be and will receive this witness. Amen.
on the left-hand side of your screen is a QR code. You can scan this code with a smartphone or smart device. And with the website that opens from that QR code, you can do three different things. First, register your attendance. Second, submit a prayer request. And third, give online. The QR code is an ongoing experiment for us. And when you use it to register your attendance, you can tell us how you are creating meaning and deepening your faith, which we are always so very glad to hear. If you're not sure about how to use the QR code, don't worry. There are links in the below video description that do the very same thing. Now we turn to our prayer of the people, which is an alternative to the ways in which we normally pray. This prayer is not passive, but active. It is a body prayer, one that will engage our full selves. And I invite you to participate in ways that are helpful and create meaning for you. For our first move, will you put your hands next to your mouth as if you are speaking out? And let us pray. Holy Presence and Holy Teacher, we want to witness, O oh God, to the future you want and ultimately will have. But before we do that, we first confess that witnessing has a lot of baggage with it. The church universal has not done well with witnessing. And that makes us uncomfortable. Open our minds to see the diverse ways in which we witness to your justice and joy, peace and shalom. Such a witness is recklessly inclusive, affirming, and joy-filled. Help us to also witness to the new ways that you create beginning from the ashes of the past. We will witness to these things any day of the week. For our second move, will you take your hand from next to your mouth and cup it around your ear so that we may hear. And let us continue our prayer. Holy teacher, we confess that sometimes we are more quick to speak and to say what we know than to receive the witness of another. Help us to honor truth revealed from another. Help us to receive the witness of people who may be different from us and to honor a truth that may challenge what we think we know and what is settled. May such witnesses help us examine our faith, our thoughts, and belief itself so that our witness together may be all the more powerful and right, and good, and just, and fair. Help us to witness to and hear a witness that is not at all colonizing or conquering, but life-giving, loving, and liberating. We'll be witnesses to that all the time with your help. For our final move, will you bring your hands toward your heart as in a posture of devotion and let us continue our prayer saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to this table. It is a witness. 
because it is so recklessly inclusive. And that is our practice in this church, to welcome anyone, everyone, no matter who you are, where you are. This table is for you. That is a witness church that is transforming. It is the witness in which we share. On the night Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room, he first washed his hands, and then looking upon the table, he found gifts of both grain and grape. And taking the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks for it, said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we witness to the life-giving, loving, and liberating gospel of Jesus Christ. Come, beloved, you are welcome and wanted here, and everything is ready. Go into the world, beloved, and make a plain declaration and a public demonstration, a witness to the very best, most beautiful gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Embody this gospel that is alternative to the ways of the world because the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Remember that you are never, ever very far from God's heart. And finally, Finally, trust with everything you've got and all that you are that the future God wants and ultimately will have. It's here, it's now, even as it is still on its way. Amen.